This program is brought to you by NewsWorks in cooperation with the City of Eau Claire. This program is simulcast on WRFBLP 101.9 FM. We'll call the meeting to order. Welcome to the August 19th, 2019 meeting of the Eau Claire Plan Commission. Uh, <clears throat> just a few points before we get started. This meeting is being broadcast uh, live by Valley Media Works on Charter Channel 994, WRFP LP 101.9 FM, and online at valleymediaworks.org. The Plan Commission attempts to conduct this, its public hearings in a relatively informal manner within the constraint that we must deal with the issues before us in an orderly and businesslike fashion. We give the applicant an opportunity to speak first, then others, either for or against the proposal, are each permitted to speak once. <clears throat> we do request that everyone restrict their comments to the issues before us, avoid unnecessary repetition, and be prudent of the use of time. We want to be sure that we have adequate time to review and discuss all items with equal diligence. Please remember to turn your phones to off or silent during the meeting. If you do wish to speak, we do have one item of, uh, for a public hearing today. It's the first item. Uh, if you do wish to speak uh, and make public comments on that, there is a yellow slip of paper in the back of the room. If you would please fill that out and give it to Mr. Petrie uh, when you come up and speak. And also remember to give your name and address when you, when you speak, uh, address the, uh, the commission. Uh, so with that, we'll begin with item number one, which is a public hearing for recommendation to city council uh, to rec recommend approval to amendments to the Sky Park Industrial Center general development plan. Mr. Allen. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the commission. <clears throat> the first item again before this evening is uh, related to Sky Park Industrial Center. Uh, shown here on this item number one, the southwest part of the city. Just a little bit more closely zoomed in, which is included in your packet. More specifically, the parcels uh, in question here related to Sky Park Industrial Center. And finally, actually one more to show you after this, uh, this is the public hearing notification uh, map uh, showing the parcels that were uh, provided direct uh, public notice of tonight's uh, meeting. And finally, just an aerial photo, again, for reference. Uh, it's located essentially uh, southwest of the intersection of Hamilton and Craig and east of Highway 37 and north of Interstate 94. Uh, the City of Eau Claire is the applicant this evening and they're proposing to abolish the current Sky Park Protective Covenants terminology for the uh, restrictive covenants for the uh, Sky Park uh, Industrial Park and looking to replace them with an amended Sky Park Development Plan which was included in your packet. Hence the uh, reason for the rezoning request for in terms of process, that's the uh, formal process uh, that's needed in order to uh, adopt a general development plan with uh, new restrictions rather than the current uh, protective covenants as they're called. Uh, the Sky Park <coughs> Development Plan simplifies the process to develop in Sky Park, making it more attractive to new businesses, but maintains the original intent to keep development desirable, uniform, and suitable in architect architectural design and limited to uses specified in the development plan. This is in order to achieve a more park-like improvement with moderate density and large landscaped areas. So again, as the majority owner of property in Sky Park, at least by acreage, uh, the City of Eau Claire is authorized to request this amendment. Uh, there have been uh, supportive uh, responses from a number of current owners, uh, landowners, business owners within the park. Uh, 
again, procedurally, this amendment would be processed as any other general development plan for, through rezoning ordinance. But there is a re addition of a resolution before city council. Again, that's not before the planning commission here tonight. But there will be kind of a two-step process uh, when this moves forward to city council. So the resolution would uh, abolish the current covenants, and then an ordinance, as before you here this evening, would adopt the general development plan. Again, so although the restrictive covenants would be abandoned, uh, the new development plan before you here this evening would provide <coughs> governance in the continued development of the park. Uh, without going through line by line, but again, happy to answer your questions. Uh, Aaron White, our, thank you, Aaron. Uh, Aaron White, our economic development manager, is here this evening as well and was instrumental in, in helping modify and provide the amended general development plan before you this evening. So he's here as well and can answer some specific questions if you have any. But some of the proposed changes include expanding architectural design choices, uh, particularly for corner lots, uh, aligning signage standards with the city's overall sign code provisions, and moving from conditional to permitted uh, the uses, industrial services, industrial products, sales, and warehouse and distribution, all three of which are currently represented uh, by Sky Park tenants. And those are currently, again, listed as conditional uses, simply being moved to permitted uses, so changing procedural requirement there. Uh, similarly, uh, some of the other minor modifications include uh, increasing uh, the maximum building coverage from currently it is at 60% to 70%. And again, pointing back to building design in terms of those specifically related to multi-facade uh, design standards, again, particularly related to corner lots. So with that, happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Any questions from the commission? Commission Commissioner Grandland. I have a, a couple, if you don't mind. Sure. The, in the first paragraph, it refers to itself as covenants. Is that the mm -hmm. starting paragraph says these covenants are the purpose of these covenants? Has that been edited since we've had this inserted in our pack? I know sometimes we get some preliminary. Preliminary work on editing. <coughs> sure, I, no, I, th I think it's more of a term of art, but that's certainly uh, something we could uh, consider modifying just in terms of referring to the plan rather than covenants, perhaps. Is that your right? Right, like since they're no longer applying as sure. covenants, but as an ordinance. And with the lowercase c, again, kind of more of a term of art than anything, but. Yep. Um, <coughs> and then since we had the some signage requests <coughs> at the other end of town regarding the use of some of the parcels as a multi-tenant mm -hmm. space, is that included in how the signage is laid out for this as well? That is the intent, yes. The intent is to include that multi-tenant signage opportunity? Correct. That's correct. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the commission? Commissioner Gregor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. And I was wondering about the ownership of the parcels other than like the former landfill. Like, are those city owned or, or for the most part, owned by their property owners? I might defer to Mr. White on that. I know they're, again, majority city owned, but uh, to what extent, I'm not entirely sure, other than, you know, I know the uh, solar garden here with Excel is still city owned. Beyond that, I don't know if Aaron, if you don't mind coming up. <clears throat> Absolutely. If you look at the map, the city still owns, um, such as this corner lot, these lots along here, corner lots over here, as well as the solar garden. So there still are a number of, of vacant lots within the facility that are owned by the city. Some of our planning documents, like the bicycle and pedestrian plan, there's a, a vision for some sort of bike and pedestrian connection from Grover Road to Continental Drive. Is there, so it, I guess the particular parcel that's in between Five Star Plastics and Great Lakes, is that one owned by the city? 
Is this the one you're referring to here? Yeah. I believe so, yes. Yes, that is also one of the lots that's owned by the city. So I guess the reason why I asked the question is, is this this um, development plan a place where we would, um, it would be appropriate to, to make sure we're in a position to be able to use that land potentially or a very small sliver of it for a, a connection? Or is that something that is kind of further down the road? Uh, I'll let Mr. White answer as well, but I know um, speaking with uh, a previous uh, business specialist staff member, I know uh, that we were looking at some potential uh, redesign in terms of public access and connectivity, as you're referring, in part based on the bike and ped plan and other, uh, other plans to look at kind of further enhancing uh, multimodal access to and through the park, but um, I'm looking under subpart uh, nine under landscaping and open space, and that could certainly be something we consider in a general sense. But um, it may be more appropriate. I'll look in for to Aaron. Maybe more appropriate on a parcel by parcel basis as development agreements are de defined, perhaps. I would agree with that, and, and that section is a section that was carried over from the original covenants. So, um, if it was a concept that was planned for the original through the original covenants, um, this new plan would not negate that. Um, the intent is this to be more of a park-like setting than a traditional industrial park. So, um, that's incorporated within the non-building elements as well. Okay. Any other questions from the commission? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Allen. <clears throat> this is a public hearing. If there's anyone from the public who wishes to comment on this uh, on this agenda item, welcome to come forward. Yes, sir. <clears throat> yep. Thank you, sir. Please just give us your name and address. Yeah, Kelly Cavanaugh, 1134 Violet Avenue. Um, that's our house right there. So if I stand in the backyard, it's the beer distributor and soccer park. Um, Mr. Allen left a voice message, which I listened to quick right after work. No big concerns from the neighbor, although they're what, what's going on? <laughs> and I read it as intended. That's going to be something pretty subtle. Uh, the two concerns that the neighbors do have along this area, and I don't know as many people along here, are uh, light pollution and noise. We actually hear a lot of traffic noise, engine braking down here on the interstate, and these families obviously do, but we can hear it out here. Um, we have also heard um, from the beer distributorship and maybe Medicize, I'm not sure, some nighttime uh, truck usage. And speaking, several neighbors spoke with the beer distributorship because we've got guys that come from out of town don't know the neighborhood kind of thing, and they'll park their vehicles in the back with their diesels running all night, and they're just trying to get their job done. We've talked to a couple guys early in the morning, late in the evening, and they'll say, oh, sorry, I let the door slam kind of thing. It actually wakes people up. So the manager of the beer distributorship actually said they're limited to parking in the front or on the side, so everybody's happy where nobody's across from him right now. <laughs> And on the back side, he realizes we're, we're living there. So no big fights or anything. Matter of fact, the solution for the one neighbor was he got some free beer out of it. So, <laughs> <laughs> But I just thought I'd give you a, a perspective of what the neighbors run into. Otherwise, it's been super quiet. And like I said, not a problem. Great. Thanks Thank for your you. time. All right, any other members of the public who wish to speak? Uh, good evening. My name is Sean Bohan, 1504 Sherwin Avenue. Um, I own uh, Advanced Engineering Concepts. Uh, it's a 1320 International Drive. Um, I'm here to speak in favor of this. I think it's it's wonderful that the city is um, basically going to kind of take over. It's not like anything else is or uh, that it's going to diminish anything. It just makes the process a little bit easier. Um, we moved in about a year and a half. Um, kind of went through the ringers and stuff. Um, 
and, and uh, went through the conditional use permit, but there were some other residents that weren't quite so happy. I think this takes that away. Um, I, I think the city is going to do a wonderful job making sure that the architecture, the lot sizes, that type of stuff, um, the businesses in there um, are going to maintain as, as the industrial center. So um, we're just here to end up speaking in favor of this. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members of the public that want to speak on uh, the recommendation for amendments to Sky Park? Seeing none, we will uh, see if there's a motion and a second. Commissioner Seymour. Thank you. Uh, so moved. I'll second. Commissioner Wolf Graham. <coughs> Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, we'll call the question. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That passes. Thank you. Item number two is a public discussion for recommendation to City Council on approval of an annexation in the area of Quail Ridge Road. Mr. Allen. Thank you again, Mr. Chair. And Members of the commission, in item two, the southeast part of the city, adjacent to it, that is, on the south side of Otter Creek, is the uh, request to, or petition, I should say, to annex vacant land to the city of Eau Claire from the town of Washington. Again, it's located south of Otter Creek, at the western terminus of Quail Ridge Road. Just located here. Show a little bit more of an aerial photo. This is a map from the county system, so you can see kind of the, the yellow is the uh, current city of Eau Claire uh, city limits properties, and then white uh, being within the town of Washington, along with the green. It, shaded area being the properties in question. It's actually three separate parcels under consideration. Here's an aerial just showing how it is vacant adjacent to some existing and under construction single family development in this area. And this is being the property <coughs> I should say. The single family development being this area and down along here as well. So with that, uh, property owner is uh, Mr. David G. Lund. Again, he has submitted a petition for annexation of what <coughs> amounts to just over 15 acres of land. Again, as you can see here, the property is comprised of three separate lots, totaling the 15 acres. The property is located within the sewer service area of the city of Eau Claire. Water and sanitary sewer are available along Quail Ridge Road and Harless Road. It's a little bit harder to see this one. I'll try to zoom in. It shows a little bit more specifically where those services are. Red being the sanitary sewer, blue being the water service, and green being stormwater. So there are services all around uh, the properties in question. Uh, no land use changes are proposed at this time as a result of the requested annexation. It is consistent with the comprehensive plan, which shows this uh, proposed land use as residential. I'll defer to the, uh, the petitioner to perhaps uh, explain more uh, proposed use, but from how it was described to staff, uh, again, the, Mr. Lund owns this property as well and is looking to uh, simply connect these three parcels to this one that's currently in the city and then uh, build a single family detached home at that location. So with that, stand for any questions. Thank you, any questions from the commission? Commissioner Granlund. Um, I noticed in the top left corner of the photo or the map, there's another section which is town of Washington. Will that require another dedication of a narrow strip East, west, and the north, south, similar to the one that's on the down on the left-hand side of the page. I mean, we've got the, the little bit of jigsaw elements, and I couldn't I couldn't figure out where the 
where that opposite side of Otter Creek connects back to other town of Washington parcels, unless the, the, the designation might be incorrect here. But on the, sure. on the blow up, it actually has a little bit of town of Washington at the north right, west right. side of the page. I believe that portion is more adjacent to the city of Altoona. You're referring to this right, area. But isn't it required to be continuous? Mr. Allen, I can answer sure, that question. Sure, thank you for clarifying. I believe the, that map that's shown is incorrect. Oh, it is, okay. Uh, that, mark, uh, that marking should be something else. That's the city of Altoona. We did talk with the state of Wisconsin about this request. Um, the, island, the town is ready an island, so we're actually shrinking the island down. It kind of goes all the way to the west and to the so south. It, it stops at that that that's correct north south line. Correct. That parcel there that that's right above Otter Creek is not town of Washington. Correct. That's correct. This is Altoona. Correct. Oh, no, to the left of that, it's oh, marked it's town of Washington. Oh, it's labeled as town of Washington, but that's so incorrect. That's okay. Just an inc okay. Apologies. Thank yeah, it must have an outdated version of it in this on this map. Thank you for catching that, and clarifying that. Thanks, Ryan. But yes, the rest of this to the east, this is all city of Altoona. Right. Any other questions from the commission? Commissioner Peterson. As the previous commissioner brought up, you cannot create a town island, and I guess that's been taken care of. Right. As far as access is concerned, looking at the three lots, it looks like uh, two are immediately available with the dryer road connection, which is actually through the town right there and that is constructed uh, correct but as you indicated the access to the proper the, the third lot on the east side would be off of oak ridge or quail ridge road then actually this piece is in the city of eau claire that is just yeah to clarify yeah okay. that portion of dryer road so all of dryer road is in the city of eau claire up to that point it hasn't mattered to the city in the past but but for the third lot to the east, um, that's going to come off a Quail, Quail Ridge Road then? That's the intent. Access. Right, correct. I, I'll defer to the petitioner to clarify. But I, again, I, the understanding is, again, the petitioner owns this property as well as the three parcels in question. So the intent would then be under one ownership, there can be connection through not only to this parcel, but then you know, consecutively down a long line. But yes, dry road, this too, again, is not entirely accurate. We'll talk to our GIS person. <laughs> this is, you're right, thank you for catching that as well. Uh, county map shows it more accurately. This is in the city. So, but yes, dry road is another one for the, for both this one, the westernmost, as well as the central. Touches both of those at this point. But yes, the easternmost would be connected through to Quail Ridge. Okay, yep. thank you. Any other questions from the commission? <clears throat> I see none, thank you. All right, thank you. Is the applicant here? I am. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, I'm Dave Lund, uh, the applicant. Uh, the only purpose that I'm actually uh, making the request is uh, I'd like to build uh, a single home and the home will straddle the existing line. And I thought to maintain, uh, and I purchased the other lots just to keep them from being built upon. And so my intent is not to do any development. Matter of fact, that's the whole purpose by it so that nobody else develops it either. So I'll uh, keep it as one piece of property and not develop it. So it was really an intent to be able to build the house that was right next to the line. It was little, it was right on the edge of the line. And we thought uh, instead of messing with the Washington Township and the city, we just annex the whole thing and pay taxes to one entity. All right. All right. Any questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> and this is a public discussion. So we will see if there's a motion support of this item. Commissioner Peterson. I'll make a motion to approve the annexation. 
I'll second Mr. Brenholt. All right, any discussion? Seeing none, we'll call the question. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Seeing none, that motion passes. Item number three is a public discussion for recommendation to the City Council uh, for approval of a final, final condo plat at Westridge Village Townhome Condominiums. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good evening, everybody. Before you is a final condo plat. Uh, it's shown number three on your map, far west side of Eau Claire. Uh, before you is the final condo plat for Westridge Village Townhome Condominiums number two. The applicant is the everyday serving and engineering. The property owner is Wurzer Builders. It's approximately 1.2 <clears throat> acre parcel that's currently zoned R3P. Uh, the purpose of the condo plat is to create 14 units. The 14 units will be consist of two eight units and three two units as shown on the screen. Uh, similar, this is similar to the west development which is shown here. Uh, so two buildings will be along Stonewood Drive uh, and then three buildings uh, along the backside. Now the, the first phase did have four buildings. Uh, this was originally approved back in 2007 for the master plan. Uh, in 2016, the plan commission and council reviewed a beehive assisted living on the parcel to the east. Uh, that master plan revised uh, the condo plat for this project and the site plan was approved in 2016. Each site plan is good for three years. The applicant is aware that he would like to start this project this year, uh, so the site plan's potentially would not have to come back to the plan commission. Uh, it appears there was an issue with the recording of the original final plat, condo plat with the county and the state timeline, um, and it was breached at 10 years. Uh, with that, this request would go forward to the Tuesday meeting for council uh, next Tuesday on the 27th. Um, and with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions for this request. Thank you, any questions from the commission? I see none. Thank you, Mr. Petrie. Is the applicant here? Uh, apparently not. All right. Is there a motion uh, in support of recommending this final condo plat to City Council? Mr. Granlin. I move the recommendation. <coughs> Excuse me. I move the recommendation. To Thank council. you. Is there a second? Mr. Peterson. I'll second it. And any discussion? Seeing none, we'll call the question on this one. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. And that motion passes unanimously. Number four is a public discussion for approval by the <coughs> Plan Commission uh, for a site plan for a grocery store at 2424 Claremont Avenue, High V grocery store thank you mr Appreciate chair you. uh number four on your site uh map here on the east side southeast side of eau claire uh, this is the current site of the property the former kmart uh 2424 east claremont avenue the applicant is hy v inc the property owner is claremont properties llc the engineer architect and surveyor on the project is sd professionals or s jsd uh, professional services uh, the parcel is approximately 9.7 acres, currently zoned C3. As shown here, the existing vacant Kmart sites here, Memorial High School to the west, a holiday gas station here, strip center here. Uh, to the east is Pizza Hut and um, Milwaukee Burger Company. To the north is a mixture of commercial uses. To the south is Claremont Avenue. The request is to build a 90, oh, there is existing site, a 96,000 square foot grocery store. This grocery store consists of a pharmacy, a restaurant, clinic, wine and spirits, a Starbucks, and many other things as noted in the report. The applicant did provide a narrative, a floor plan, elevations, sign plan, lighting plan, and uh, again, narratives of the property. The current property use is uh, vacant retail space, the zoning is C3. 
the single story uh, building would be replacing the vacant Kmart and it would be facing to the west. It's on the far east side of the site. The existing building is here. Uh, that would be facing, um, again, the Memorial High School. The back of it would be facing uh, Lucky Burger Company and Pizza Hut. Um, the, the building facade, as shown on the elevations um, here, show a brick facade, glass, concrete, and metal. Uh, the site plan shows 552 parking stalls. The required parking is 456. 20 of those stalls are for, uh, my understanding is for Herberts and Gerberts on the southwest side of the site. The narrative shows the parking calculations on the floor plan as shown on the screen and in your packet. Uh, they're approximately 16.7% over the maximum of 532 stalls. The plan commission will need to determine uh, this is in compliance with the maximum off street parking requirements as shown on the site plan. The the, pur the purpose of those requirements is to prevent excess parking, lot coverage with pavement, and to reduce the heat and, and surface runoff. The existing site, as noted, uh, I'll go back to the area real quick, as noted, it is a very large paved area with probably no green space at all. The applicant is noting that the impervious surface is reducing the site by 11% approximately. Uh, also, Hy-Vee does a seasonal display similar to the Shopco used to do, where they would take up 50 to 60 stalls. Uh, snow storage would take up approximately 50 or 60 stalls as well. The, the parking stalls do not account for the um, storage of carts, as noted. Uh, the landscape plan, as shown on the screen, uh, does add a significant amount of green space, trees, and shrubs. The trees and shrubs would be along Claremont Avenue, Ridge Road, throughout the site. The parking islands would also have trees and shrubs uh, uh, throughout the parking lot. Um, again, the building uh, noted is facing to the west. The side of the building that would be facing Claremont Avenue would be the pharmacy drive up. At the back of the building would be for deliveries. The restaurant part would be on the north side of the site and two entrances uh, on the west side would be entering the store. Um, the trash enclosures, as noted on the rear of the building, uh, near the Pizza Hut location. A sidewalk connection is shown from the public sidewalk, or yeah, from the public sidewalk and the public trail to the existing site. Bicycle parking, uh, the applicant is requesting the reduction to four stalls total, so that would be two racks. Uh, the required parking would be 45 stalls. That's based on one per 10 stalls required. The plan commission may reduce that down to appropriate number as they find fit. Uh, staff did have a preliminary conversation. Also, one of the commission members has been emailing staff about that request. Uh, the applicant believes that four stalls is appropriate based on studies of other stores. Staff is in, on the fence on it. We don't really know exactly how many stalls they need. I don't know if you ever bike to the grocery store, but you're not buying very many things if you're biking to the grocery store, just my personal opinion. Um, so this, the it would be left up to the commission to decide what, what is the most appropriate number. I would note that Memorial to the west and there is a bike trail to the south. Now that may increase that demand somewhat. Uh, any of the employees could be biking to work as well. The most similar project that we've done in the past, the Plan Commission reviewed the Mill Sleep Farm site. Now, uh, that was on the south end of town on 93 and 94. They were required to put in uh, approximately, uh, they put in 23 stalls. Their square footage of their building was 218,000 square feet, which is more than double the, the proposed high V. Um, just use that as an example. Uh, noted in your report is the grading and drainage for the site, uh, the public utilities, traffic is showing a new right in right out off of Claremont Avenue, similar to what, I would compare that to what CVTC was allowed to the east of their site. That would be reviewed by a TIA with the, on behalf of the city of Eau Claire and the state of Wisconsin, uh, WSDOT. Also the plan calls for a 38 foot driveway width which the plan commission will have to approve on Ridge Road.
transit for the site currently was going through the Kmart site. My understanding is they do not go through there anymore at this time. But in the future, if this store was to be built, they would like to potentially add a new stop uh, with the demand for transit. With that being said, there is some few conditions that need to be met before a building permit can be issued. Um, before you again is you're reviewing the parking lot, um, um, parking stall calculations that they've provided, and the bicycle parking, uh, the plan commission to decide on both of those tonight. With that being said, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, Mr. Allen and Ms. Ness is available as well. Um, High V officials are here as well uh, to answer any questions on behalf of the commission. Thank you, Mr. Petrie. Uh, Commissioner Brent Holt. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Petrie, with regards to bicycle parking, I, it was my understanding there's more than two bikes per rack, correct? It depending yeah. on what kind of rack you put in, but okay. typically uh, most people put in the U-shaped racks, which is two per rack. Per rack. Yes, and the, the applicant would probably put in those. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. okay. Do, we, do, do the other grocery stores in the area have the same requirement for a proportionate number of bicycle racks parking? Or were they grandfathered uh, in before this requirement came into place? My understanding is there were all existing except the Mills Feet Farm site, which was built, was that last year or two years ago? All the other stores were existing in the, uh, I think the bicycle parking requirements came in effect after they were built. So they would all be grandfathered in. Unless they did an addition, uh, then they'd be required to add bicycle parking. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Peterson. Yes, do you know if there are any existing cross easements for the properties to the east across this property? <clears throat> that I'm not sure. Uh, the applicant would, would know that, and that would be an appropriate question for them to answer. Okay, and what happens if the DOT does not allow them to reopen the access to Claremont Avenue? The site plan will have to change because the, the access was there. When Kmart was in its heyday, the access was removed, and it's highly unlikely the DOT will give them the access back. That's how I used to work in that area, DOT. Yes. <laughs> I, would, I would ask the applicant that same question as well. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions? Commissioner Gregor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Petrie. <clears throat> question, maybe a few questions are actually related to the to bus access <clears throat> Route 18, which has every half hour service through there, which is one of our best routes. So I'm happy to see another uh, good use for it. But um, <clears throat> do you foresee the bus stop being on Ridge Road? And um, or do you foresee some sort of way for the bus to, to pull into the parking lot and then maybe have a bus shelter and have some amenities like that that are that get folks uh, closer to the to the entrance to the building? Yeah, ex excellent question, uh, Mr. Gregor. Uh, bef I would compare this probably to the stop at Walmart, hopefully. Um, the reason being is because of the demand. Not only do they have groceries, they have a restaurant, they have a pharmacy, they have all that. Um, that would need to be an added condition to the approval. Um, it does say safe <coughs> pedestrian access to the public transit services. I'm not sure what they've done at other locations, but I believe they would be open to potentially adding a stop uh, near the entrance or one of the entrances at this facility. Um, I do know that the Walmart location uh, does have an actual uh, stop and then they have like covered uh, where they can actually, the, um, the riders can wait in that covered area. Um, that would need to be an added condition to the report. Um, as noted, and then excellent question for the applicant as well. I guess a follow-up question to that. If, it, if for some reason the bus stop is not um, on the property itself, but rather on Ridge Road, um, and maybe even without a bus stop on Ridge Road, does the city foresee any sort of improvements to Ridge Road itself in order to increase like, pedestrian access? <coughs> 
particularly maybe a crosswalk from the bus stop on Ridge Road to the building. Excellent question. I would defer that to uh, the traffic engineer. I can speak to that. Um, I, I don't know specifically. I don't know specifically if the uh, Ridge Road is in the five-year CIP plan for roadway improvements, but based on the traffic impact analysis, there will be recommendations for pedestrian access and accommodations as well as transit use and bicycle use. So the scope of the WISDOT TIA encompasses all users of the facility. Um, looking at motorized vehicles, pedestrians, transit, and bicyclists. So there will be recommendations to um, each of those modes of transportation. To go back on one item, too, I did talk with the transit manager today, and as a part of the uh, last transit uh, plan that was adopted, one of the recommendations of the plan was to try to n not have routes go through private parking lots for safety reasons. So that's something that would probably be discussed further after the results of the TIA and uh, with the transit manager. Do you have another follow-up? Is that the transit development plan that stated that? And is the transit development plan something that we have to follow? <laughs> <laughs> it was the transit development plan that recommended staying off of the private property parking lots. That's my question is, is was that plan simply approved as written by the consulting firm, or was that something that was that was basically all the recommendations were, were approved by the planning commission. I'm not sure of the approval of the transit demand or the, the transit development plan or the process that it had to go through, but we can look into that. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions from the commission for Mr. Petrie? Thank you, sir. And is the applicant here? Good evening. Uh, my name is John Bram. I'm a director of site planning for Hy-Vee Incorporated. Um, I'll, I'll, I don't have a fancy presentation. I'm, I'm here to support the, re the proposal, the re request, and answer any questions. Um, I'll try and uh, hit the four questions that I heard uh, from my seat uh, first. I'll start with the easiest one, and that's the, the bike parking. Um, our standard is typically to put in two bike racks at every one of our stores. Um, however, we just, we've been through Eau Claire a couple times now, and uh, with the proximity of the, the school and the 90 or so bike parking stalls that are over at the high school, um, I think we'd be foolish to have only two bike racks at this location. Um, so we'll, we'd like to request to amend um, our petition to have 14 bike racks installed, which is uh, half the required number. Um, if more are needed, um, we, can, we can decide that based on, on how much use we see. And uh, the, the racks that we use are Adiro. They're a, they're a ground-mounted unit, so you can add them as needed one rack at a time, and it's it's pretty easy and expandable that way. Um, as far as uh, bus transit is concerned, we love having bus transit near our stores. Um, almost every location we've had, we will, we will support bus transit um, up to providing shelters, benches, pads for the bus stop. Um, anything we can do to support, and we'll work with you on, on the bus uh, issue. Um, I'll tackle the right in, right out question. Um, there was a question about um, how does that affect us. Um, if we can't get that approved, um, we'd be disappointed, obviously. We think, we think that would be a big help to the store um, to pull a lot of the traffic off of Fairfax, and I believe it's um, Pierce Road, 
coming off of uh, 28 from the north, um, the store will drive a lot of traffic down through those neighborhoods and across the front of the store. We'd prefer to have some kind of outlet or way for customers to get in off of Claremont, uh, make that transition easier. If we can't get that, um, we'll have to go back to the drawing board and, and work on access a little more and, and figure out how we make this work uh, without that right in, right out. Um, we hope um, that our traffic study shows that that uh, access will work and the Wisconsin Department of Transportation in the city um, will allow us to have that. Um, the, the last issue I had on my on my list was the, the large number of parking stalls and I run into this uh, in almost every city um, we apply to where, we, where we're coming in as a, as a new business, um, new member of the community. Uh, a lot of people don't believe that we actually need five and a half parking stalls per thousand gross square feet of floor area in our stores, but um, the truth is that we really do um, for a couple of reasons. Um, one, we drive a lot of business, so we do have a lot of customer traffic come to our stores. Um, that, that's important to us. If we don't have that heavy traffic number, um, our margins are slim and uh, that, that traffic is needed. The other reason is uh, we're service heavy uh, service friendly store and that means we have a lot of employees in any given shift and uh, at, at a store this size you'll see anywhere from 80 to 125 employees per shift. Now hopefully not all of them drive cars to work but our experience is that most of them drive their own cars to work and they need a place to park so there's 80 to 125 parking stalls um, taken up by employees. Uh, snow storage and outdoor sales space takes up another 50 to 60 parking stalls typically. Um, our, out, our seasonal displays typically go from, let's see, Eau Claire, probably April would be the earliest we could get outdoor um, sales in the parking lot to June or July would be the latest. And then obviously through the winter, um, those stalls aren't available either, um, depending on the winter. Um, in addition, we typically have uh, about 16 cart corrals in a store this size. So that's another 16 parking stalls that are taken up um, just to keep cart corrals out of people's ways and, and keep them stored. Um, <clears throat> and then we have a restaurant as well. And as you know, restaurants have a heavier parking ratio requirement than a typical grocery store or the other uses in the, in the store. And so that also drives some of that additional, that parking ratio. So hopefully that answers your questions on those issues, and I'd be happy to answer any other questions you might have. Thank you. Commissioner Peterson. Yes, do you know of any cross easements with the properties to the east? Uh, there is one parking easement that um, uh, the Kmart property has uh, with the Holiday Store and I think the other property to the north. Um, and that's for parking and access along that west edge of the parking lot. But but none for but the none, properties. To none the from east none. With. There's none that go east to west across the front of the okay. Kmart. Because if there were, the the building yeah. would block. Yeah, those. that we've found so far. We've done a full Alta and haven't found anything. Okay, so. thank you, mm -hmm. Commissioner Wolf Graham. Thank you, Chairperson Larson. Um, welcome to our community, Mr. Brim. I'm excited. Uh, as well as many other people. I appreciate you being willing to work with transit and I just wanted to ask you to seriously consider putting the bus stop very close to the entrance as Kmart had it and that's in the best interest of our seniors, our disabled people, our families with children all year round. So that's my only <laughs> concern and my request is that you consider that. Okay. Thank you. Well. Another question, Commissioner Brenholt. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I know you haven't identified a construction start date. Um, have you identified a date when you might do demolition of the current structure? Or would those two be contiguous? Uh, well, um, we're kind of concerned that it, it's, uh, it might self-demolish. Um, a portion of the structure is already done, <laughs> taking care of itself uh, in that regard. Uh, we, we, have, we have discussed that. We haven't set a date for it yet. Um, we're currently in our due diligence period. Um, hopefully when we get through uh, planning commission and council, um, we have a few other things that we need to tie up and then we'll be ready to close on the property. Um, 
and hopefully we'll have a time to set where we can take that building down. Um, Thank it's, you. it's not really in the city's interest, and it's not in ours really to keep it standing at this point. So, Commissioner Gregor. <laughs> Mr. Brim, thank you for your letter and, and all of your work on this, and appreciate your your ability to to, uh, to work with the various users of the, of the the great transportation network we have here. Um, the, the transit um, service is something it sounds like could be worked out with mm -hmm. the staff pretty well. And, um, I guess I had a question a bit about the bike parking, could you point out uh, perhaps like all that different entrances to the building that would be used by customers and then also those that would be used heavily by staff or are all staff going to be generally entering through the, the top yeah, right there. Okay. main entrances? Uh, there, there are a lot of entrances so I do my best to catch them all here. Uh, these are the main entrances right here. So there's two sets of doors. Um, and you can go in and out through both sets. There is a separate entrance to the restaurant up here. Uh, right now, we're just showing our two bike racks right here. And our typical uh, policy is to have bike racks near entrances um, so that the bike owners uh, can feel safe about locking their bike up and, and having it in front of the store uh, rather than trying to put it around the edge or out of sight. So, um, and the, this sidewalk is is extensive. It's 12 to 15 feet wide, so there's plenty of room for more bike racks up here. Um, there's a entrance down here for wine and spirits, and there's a secondary <coughs> entrance here for the pharmacy and uh, I'll call it the south end of the store, which would be more of the refrigerated frozen food section. So the, the main entrance, you'd go through here. This would be all the fresh produce, all the kitchen, uh, the restaurant, and then you move kind of this way through the building. And in the back, you'd find the meat service, uh, the bakery, pharmacies down here. Uh, but that's the general flow of the building. And then there's there's entrances all along this face that the public can get into. I guess my follow-up question would be, would you be planning to spread out the bike parking to have some at each entrance? Yeah, yes, yeah. That's one, one thing that I've used as a Bicyclist who does go to the grocery store uh, are, is a bike trailer, so I can actually buy a decent <laughs> amount of things. Um, so I guess one request would be that for bike. Do you think? Do you feel like there would be space for someone to walk behind a bike with a trailer on it, with the width of that sidewalk of 12? Um, um, I have not had to deal with bike trailers before, so that <laughs> that is <laughs> that is uh, something we'll have to look at. Um, we could. We could orient the, I mean, if that's something that's being brought to the store a lot, that's just, uh, you just have to reorient the bike rack so that it's uh, perpendicular or parallel with the building instead of perpendicular with it so you don't have that uh, trailer extending out into the, the right of way, so to speak, for the pedestrians. I've certainly seen them at an angle too where yeah. that can help to um, the I think that was my, my main question. Thank you. All right. Any other questions from the commission? Thank you. I see none. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Uh, okay. This so this is a public discussion. We have uh, heard from the applicant. <coughs> is there a motion for approval, Commissioner Brenholt? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would uh, move approval with the adjustment to the bike parking as the gentleman from Hy-Vee had uh, recommended and appreciate the compromise there as well as the comments he made in regarding the bus route. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Wolf Graham. Um, this is a... Uh, public discussion, so we don't have a public hearing time tonight on this item. No, I, I was just wondering, is, is there going to be four of this? This is the No. 
Okay. Um, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Mr. Peterson. If the DOT does not grant the access to Claremont, then they have to change their site plan. Do they have to come back to us with an adjusted site plan, or can that access just be shut off and the site plan is going to be 99% the same, mm -hmm. except for the driveway access to Claremont. Mr. Petrie. Excellent question. Uh, there's, I believe the ordinance states, <laughs> Mr. Allen, I don't know the ordinance states, but I think it's, it states in there if there's no significant change based on what the zoning administrator uh, determines and or and or if the parking requirement is not increased by more than five stalls. So what that would mean is Hy-Vee would have to change their site plan significantly and probably add square footage to the site. Um, and or, I guess, that answers your question. In order for them to be required to come back. That is correct. Anything less than that can be approved by staff. <laughs> unless, uh, unless the zoning administrator says otherwise. Mr. Peterson. Who is the zoning administrator? Mr. Allen. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'll turn that over to Mr. Allen. Fortunately, we have him here. <laughs> wow, you know. Well, so, I'm, uh, I'm just thinking if, if they can't use that access, the parking layout probably won't change. The, the access and the throat coming off at Claremont would probably be revised to some extent, but I don't see it as a significant change except for the access itself, but parking in the, the store and the layout wouldn't change. Right, it's, it's, if uh, that helps, Mr. Allen. Correct. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Uh, as Mr. Petrie noted, it's uh, really when you start looking at uh, change in use or occupancy and then it affecting parking. So access is kind of one of those where it's a little bit more nebulous, so we'd have to see, I'm sure, defer to the uh, folks from Hy-Vee, too, as to whether if that were to be closed off, if they, like you said, presumably they could just keep it as is, but they may be looking at some reconfiguration that could justify coming back here. Okay. So I don't want to ex exclude that entirely as an option, but it's, it is, it is possible it could still come back here. Thank you. Any further discussion? Commissioner Gregor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Certainly, um, I think this is a great project and a great example of redevelopment within a kind of uh, central part of the city. Um, I, I did kind of just want to clarify that that staff would be able to perhaps find a way to, to have the bus actually enter the parking lot and it could result in some of the the um, automobile parking being taken for a bus shelter or something like that, but I, it would be, I guess it would be my desire that we find a way to do it as, <coughs> as safely as possible, uh, obviously, um, but still find a way to do it considering we, we kind of have a clean slate here in terms of the, the way the parking lot is designed and, um, you know, we're, the fact that we're making accommodation for, for automobiles to get in from a major highway through right in, right out, there might be a, like if, even if we need to create another, if we need to, to change the entrance and somehow for a bus to get in to a safer spot, we would feel that that is something we can accomplish. Uh, I just really to say. Yeah, if I may just add to that question, because I, I agree. Um, what would it what is required to uh, well in this example put a bus stop on private property when the plan calls for not doing that
and if I may add to my previous comments as well regarding uh, modifications while business materials here um, in terms of changing improved site plan talks about substantially altering so that's that's the discretion that uh, that we have to work with in terms of modifications so uh, whether you know, even with the bus parking, for example, or bus stop, I should say, if that were to substantially alter the parking, that could adjust the site plan as well in the future. But um, again, looking to Ms. Ness and Mr. Wagner, who is obviously not, not here at the moment, but we're been in contact with about this, these items. Um, Mr. Wagner uh, responded this afternoon that Route 18 uses Ridge Road to Fairfax Street to service the area. Changes may be considered to the route along uh, with corresponding site plan implementations. So I think that's really has an open mind, especially with the TIA recommendations, which reviews how transit operates with the operate with the facility, with the traffic flow of the site plan, um, on providing recommendations on how transit would operate if it would be using the private parking lot or if it would remain on street. Commissioner Granlund. Well, as, as compared with the previous retail use, uh, which had a south frontage, this new, this new development with its north-south orientation and its western frontage, uh, a lot of its entrances and use are, in fact, at the northwest corner of its building, uh, which would be, make it much more convenient for a stop on Ridge Road as compared to the previous user. Uh, where it really had to go down the middle of the site to be near any of the entrances of the of the uh, abandoned building. So I think that it's quite reasonable, depending on how the transit develops, that a stop on Ridge Road near the cluster of entrances at that northwest corner would not be a difficulty for most for many of the potential users. I think. Um, if it works, it works, and if it if it stays on Ridge Road, I think it's a, it's got a very uh, very good proximity to at least a, a good portion of the site. Once you want to, once you're pushing your cart the rest of the way around the site, okay. uh, it doesn't matter how close you started. You've got to get your cart back to where you parked, or got, get your cart back near the bus stop. I think that that northwest corner is a lot more convenient than the orientation of the previous building. Thank you. Mr. Peterson. And just another common sense, if, if the bus route travels eastbound on Ridge Road, do you know that, Leah? Well, That's if, right. if it does, know. it would be visible from the front of the building, so people who were, let's say, during inclement weather were taking shelter under any overhang in the northwest corner of the building would see the bus coming, and they could time there egress out to Ridge Road to get the, the transit then too. Thank you. Commissioner Gregor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I mean, I certainly I, I see that Ridge Road is certainly a, a viable place for a bus stop too. I just would like to see it explored. And, um, I guess one of the questions that comes up too is, I believe it's on the south end of the building that the, the Wine and Spirits area is. And, can imagine some people just coming for that use, um, and that also brings up the question of whether there should be some handicapped parking on that end too, because it all seems to be clustered, clustered on the northern end. So I guess perhaps there could be some consideration to the fact that some people would be using just one end of the building at a given time, but certainly the north end would see the most use. Thank you. Any further comments? All right, seeing none, we'll call the question. All those in favor of this uh, site plan, say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. And that passes unanimously. Congratulations. Thank you for coming tonight. Uh, any code compliance items? Future agenda items? I have a two quick uh, 
I guess, items with that. Uh, one future agenda item would be to discuss uh, affordable housing. Uh, participate in a few uh, uh, discussions and presentations along with uh, Commissioner Wolf Graham as well. Uh, last Friday, in fact, uh, with the Chamber of Commerce, eggs and issues. So uh, now that a lot of the task force initial work, I'd say I emphasize initial, initial work of the task force, uh, the regional housing task force has completed. Uh, look forward to providing a, kind of a summary and uh, information at our next meeting here, uh, which will be Tuesday, <clears throat> not Monday, due to Labor Day all of a sudden, uh, Tuesday, September 3rd. So look forward to including that as a discussion item for the next agenda. Along with that, referencing Tuesday, September 3rd, that will be uh, hopefully, um, I say hopefully in terms of looking forward to getting back to the original City Hall, but uh, certainly thankful for uh, Eau Claire County sharing uh, their wonderful facility here in the meantime. It's been very helpful and uh, uh, accessible and agreeable in a lot of different ways. So it's been very uh, great to be here at the county board room, but uh, looking forward to uh, getting back to the original city hall after the next meeting. So we'll have one more last hurrah as it's uh, planned currently anyway. Uh, here at the uh, Eau Claire County Boardroom for our next meeting. So look forward to seeing everybody at least one more time, but uh, presumably just one more time. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, any other, other future agenda items from the commission? Any additions or corrections to the minutes? Seeing none and without objection, this meeting is adjourned. This program was brought to you by a cooperation between NewsWorks and the City of Eau Claire. A transcript of this meeting is available for the hearing impaired. It will be available within seven days of this telecast. Call 715-839-4912 or TDD 715-839-1689 or write Eau Claire City Clerk, PO Box 5148 Eau Claire, Wisconsin, 54702-5148. NewsWorks is made possible by continuing community support. If you would like to volunteer or make a donation, please contact us via phone at 715-839-5067 or online at valleymediaworks.org.